Welcome to worship. This is Mother's Day. It is always a service centered in love, celebrating love, the love from God to us, the love from us to each other, the love that we know so well from our mothers. This week, we have the deacons will be meeting this Monday. They'll be meeting in person, which will be a new thing. Uh, and also the worship committee is meeting on Zoom on Monday. On Tuesday, we have our prayer group on Zoom. If you'd like to participate in that, just let me know. I can send you an invite. And uh, this, just another good week of us living out the life of Christ and all that we do. In this series, just as he told us, last week we looked at how Jesus told us to be peaceful when we disagree. Today, we'll be looking at how love is the main thing. Today, we are in downtown Cleveland at one of the great libraries in our state. This is the Cleveland Public Library. The floor mat tells you this is the People's University. There we enter into the Grand Library beautiful marble hallways, gorgeous. 
the center reading room, beautiful mosaics in the walls, contemporary photographs of current life in Cleveland, the beautiful artwork up high. We walk down the section, the largest foreign language library in the nation, not just in Ohio. Here we enter into the special collections of the library, where we have the world's largest collection of chess books and memorabilia. As we move farther into special collections, we see here the world's smallest book, Old King Cole. I don't know how that is, but it's the world's smallest book. Here we have those ancient books. These are a clay book from the ancient Babylonian period. And there we have the iconoclastic Superman, the Cleveland Super Sculpture. Libraries are awesome. Our Bible is the library of God's books of how to live a holy life. Do you know by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are not only in your home today, but you are in the sanctuary of God. So let's turn aside from the distractions that we have in our house and let us focus our, ourselves on God, on the love of God, on the living God who is truly present with us and even more clearly now than the rest of the week. Let us pray together as we invite Christ into our home. O oh God, form the minds of your people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the Holy Spirit so that in all these days we are able to live powered by his love and his mind and his will. Let us take this time to confess our sins privately so that we enjoy more of Christ's mind and spirit. And then together, let us pray. Amen. And together we pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that we are your people of love. We thank you so much that by your spirit within us, we are able to worship and love God. We are able to worship you. We are able to love our neighbors, to love those far away, to love those near. We thank you, God, that we have gone out in your name and we have been your people of light, your people of grace, your people of joy. We have loved those in our family, loved those far, and it has been good to do so. And yet, oh God, not a one of us is perfect. We have done things wrong. We have not done things that are good. We ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus. Return the fullness of your spirit to us. Set our feet on your good and loving ways. Amen. Friends, believe the good news in Jesus Christ. We are truly forgiven. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share this peace with one another. And as you have prayer requests, be sure to put them in the comments so that then we can lift them up in the prayer group on Tuesday. Wasn't that a beautiful song? Our friend is talented at playing the piano. Do you know what a talent is? A talent is a special skill or ability that you have. It's like a special gift that God has given you. You might be talented at playing the piano or riding your bike. Maybe you're talented at jumping on trampolines or playing Legos or baking. God gives us special talents to share with others. And today, our parable that we're going to learn about teaches us how God wants us to use our talents. Let me tell you a story that Jesus told. He said there was a man who gathered three of his servants and said, I am going on a trip. But before I leave, I'm going to give you some money. So he gave a large amount of money to servant number one. He gave a medium amount of money to servant number two, and he gave a small amount of money to servant number three. The man went on his trip, and he came back, and he asked them about the money that he had given them. Well, the first two servants were excited to tell him that they had taken the money he gave them, and they had used it in ways that brought more money. So now they had doubled what they started with. And then he asked servant number three, and servant number three said, I know you are really picky about how you use your money, and so I got a shovel, I dug a hole, and I put my money in the hole, and here it is. I dug it out. Well, that made the man really mad. He said, why would you do that? These other two made great choices with the money. They have more money. I'm taking what you buried in the ground and I'm giving it to them. Hmm. What does Jesus mean by this story? Well, with all the parables, we can learn different lessons or think different things about what they mean. But today, I want to wonder if that parable might mean something about our talents. You know, God gives us those special abilities, like playing piano or building with Legos. Maybe he gives us the ability to play soccer or baseball or hockey. And when he gives us those talents, I think what this lesson 
might be telling us is that God wants us to share those with others and use them to help others, use them to show love and kindness to others. So if you're playing a sport, God wants you to do your best and also be a good teammate and help others on your team. If you're good at baking or making art, God wants you to use that to share with others. And maybe you're not sure what your talents are. You can ask a grown-up, what do you think my talents are? Or you can look inside yourself and figure out what are you good at. It might be something like, you're good at making friends, you're good at helping others, you're good at solving problems. Whatever talents God has given you, He doesn't want you to bury them inside of yourself. He wants you to share them and show His love and His kindness to others through your talents. Let's say a prayer and ask for God's help doing that this week. Dear God, thank you for the awesome talents that you give each one of us. Help us identify them and share them with others. Please help us from burying them and keeping them to ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, have a great week. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. Kids, be sure to give your moms a big hug today. And always remember, God made you, God loves you, and God is always with you. See you next week. Bye-bye.
It is a time in the service when we ask God for help, when we give God thanks and praise as we have experienced Christ's mighty love. We have birthdays this week. Let's raise up our hallelujahs. Dear Lord God, we thank you so much for David St. George, Marion Kahn, and Dick Francis. As they have birthdays this week, let them have a wonderful time in which they each know how much they are loved by you and that they are blessed by your Holy Spirit. Let them know that they are loved by people dear to them. Bless them, O oh God. Amen. As this is Mother's Day, let us say a special prayer for the mothers in our life. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the love you give us, and we thank you for the love that we have experienced through the hands and embrace and lips of our mothers. We thank you, O oh God, for all the ways that they have comforted us, nourished us, all the ways that they have shared your compassion with us. We thank you for all the sacrifices that they have made for us when they have put our needs above their own. We ask you, O oh Lord, to be with those who are mothers listening to this today, whether they are a new mother, whether they are a grandmother, whether they are an experienced mother. We ask you to just fill them and bless them and give to them all the joy that they want. Strengthen our mothers, O oh Lord, for they have important, important work. Continue to fill them with your Holy Spirit that they are able to bring your divine love to the mortal people in their lives. Help them to teach their children your ways of love and faith and hope. Give them a special anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Let them know how loved and important they are. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Dear Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are the, the parent of us all. We are precious in your sight. You hold us close to you. You hear all of our cries. You hear all of our songs of joy. You are a doting parent upon us. We thank you for your, your patient love. We thank you for your encouraging love. We thank you for your affirming love. We thank you that you always believe in us, that you hope the best for us, that you give us the best. We thank you, O oh God, that you are our holy parent, giving us love every moment of our lives. This is a day, Lord, when we celebrate your love. And we love you. We love you, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We love you with all that we are. Form us to be more like you as we love you this moment, this day. Alleluia, Lord Jesus. Alleluia. And we pray as you teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The session gives thanksgiving uh, for all, all of us who are supporting the church and our finances. Uh, we can give through the simple give on our website. We can send in our checks and be gratified knowing that all the financial support we give our church truly helps our church to more brightly shine the light of Christ out in this world. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, use all these gifts which have come into this church to build up your bright name in this dark world. In your name we pray. Amen. Reading today from Mark 12, 28 through 31. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other greater commandment than these. Thank you, Beth. So we are called by Christ to love. 
There's no better verse than this poem by Paul extolling the virtues of love. And it's one you know it is often read at weddings. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It is not irritable. It does not insist on its own way. It is not resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. Last week in our series, Just As He Told Us, we recalled how Jesus taught us to be in peace during disagreement. And we looked at how it can be done in his spirit. That is a way of showing love. And today, we recall how Jesus was asked, Teacher, what are the two most important things to do. What do you think? What are the most important things in the whole wide world to do? What did he say? Teacher, what are the two most important things to do? And he said, love and love. The two most commandments, the two greatest laws. To love God and to love your neighbor. It is important that we have both loving God, loving people. Sometimes we may focus one or the other, and that makes us out of balance and not full of God's peace. As we are called into the, the fully wonderful life that Jesus calls us to, He calls us into both love God and both love our neighbor. You know, the hobbies we do, they form us, don't they? They, they form us into the people that we are. This camera is part of my hobby as, as a, a photographer. Over the years, I've, I've loved taking pictures. And you know, when you are really into photography, you go, go beyond taking pictures. You start thinking about light and dark. You start looking at things in terms of, of how the composition is. You start seeing things in frames. Uh, you know the golden rule. You look to see if something's a four by six shot or, or if it's an eight by 10 shot or if it's a 35 millimeter shot. You start to look at the whole world differently because of your hobby. You become formed by that. What we does forms us into who we are. Jesus says, love God. When we gather on Sunday, whether we're at home watching online or whether we'll be back in the sanctuary, when we gather on Sunday, we gather to love God. 
We might use other words. We might say worship, and we might notice different components of of listening and and reading and singing and being quiet and, and, and taking things in visually of God. But it's all about loving God, offering ourselves to God. So we do in worship. We give God all that we are, and we say to God, oh, we thank you and we love you for all that you've done for us. In these good times, the bounty we have, the material blessings, the friends, the family, we just thank you for giving us this out of your love. And we love God in the hard times. We come into him in worship. We crawl in feeling meager and and low. And we say, God, we love you and help us. And out of God's great love, he pours his power into us so that we we are enriched. We come to him feeling sick. We come to him feeling weak out of love. And say, God, help us. And God pours that love into us through his Holy Spirit. Pours that love into us. And we are enriched. We give back our love. Jesus says, the first of the two greatest things that we can do is to love God. Let's be full of passion in our love for God. You know, let's let's pray wholeheartedly. Let's, let's, Let's say to God, Jesus, I love you. Spirit, I love you. Let us not be embarrassed or ashamed to love God. Father, I love you. Loving God. Loving the true God. And Jesus Christ, we see the true God. We see that the center of of God's mind and will and heart is love. And as we worship and love God, we are formed into that image of Christ. We become happier, more joyful. We become stronger more peaceful. We begin to enjoy more and more hope, love, peace, joy, faithfulness, generosity, compassion as we love God. You see, if we love a a vile thing, a nasty thing, we become more like that nasty thing, more like that vile thing. Like if we have a bad habit, we know that we engage in that habit, it makes us worse. We try to get rid of it. But if we love something pure and beautiful, we become more pure and beautiful. Jesus doesn't say love God because as as the son of God, he needs our adoration. He says to us, love God so that you become full of that love of God. If we want more of God's love, we give God love. Love God. And they said to Jesus, what are the two things, the greatest things you can do in the whole wide world? Well, we know the first is to love God. And then he says, love your neighbors. Today is that wonderful day, Mother's Day. One of the things that we like to do for our mothers, whether the mother is our, the mother of our children, our wife, or our own mother, our grandmother, it's to show that love to them with appreciation, with a bouquet. Flowers spell Mother's Day. And if you didn't get any flowers of the mothers in your life, you still have time. But there are other ways to express love, but that's a classic. It's a wonderful one. Our mothers, you know, I read something a week ago in a journal that was talking about how mothers, whether they are biological mothers or adoptive mothers, they actually grow in compassion for people in need. This has been measured, tests and things like that. 
That, of course, their compassion grows for their baby and for the children and their family. But the act of being a mother, and I'm sure it's the same with being a father, makes us more loving towards others in need. When we look at 1 Corinthians 13, we hear these words of love, and we realize that we have received this kind of love from our mothers. Not that our mothers are perfect, by no means. Not that our mothers don't run out of strength, they're exhausted. But it is that our mothers strive to love us. And our mothers, you know, they turn to God to get more strength when they're weak so that they can love us and help us. Think of your mother as I read these words from Paul when he describes what true love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Aren't those two hallmarks of a mother? Not that all mothers are infinitely patient or infinitely kind. My goodness, we children, we, you know, we stress our mothers to the max. But how often are they patient? Are they kind? Mothers are not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Okay, they'll boast about the children. But not about themselves to their children. Nor are they rude to their children or arrogant. Others do not insist on their own way. How often do mothers put what their children want to eat above what they want to eat. Are always thinking of what would make a great day for their children when their children are off school instead of what would make a great day for themselves. Mothers do not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoice in the truth. Oh, they don't like to see bad things happen to their kids, but boy, do they rejoice when the good happens. Mothers bear all things. They bear the burdens their children have. Believe all things. They believe all good things can happen for their children, that they can do it. Mothers hope all things. Are they ever hopeful for their children? How has your mother hoped for you? The person that you are today, think how much your mother's hopes help to form you to be what you are. Mothers endure all things, all oh, the pains that mothers have when their children are in pain, how they endure when their children are having a hard time. Mothers show to us this love of God. Now, it does not mean that mothers are perfect. None of us are. But in our life, if we have had a mother that has shown to us some of the characteristics of divine love, let us speak it back to them. Let us send it to them in a card. Let us, let us tell them in writing. For they help us to understand God. Now, sometimes, because they are mothers, we are very critical of them. We know them so well. Let us give them the same love they have given us, okay? Okay. Just be forgiving of them when they make a mistake. Let us, let, let us be patient with them and kind with them. Jesus says, two greatest things we can do in our lives. We can love God. We can love others. And if our experience of our mothers hasn't been one of receiving this kind of divine love, let us be forgiving. It is God who loves us in this way most eminently. When we wonder if God loves us, we can read these words from Paul. He loves us kindly. God loves us patiently. God bears all things in our life. God believes the best in us. God hopes the best for us. God is on our side. 
always with us. This picture of love that Paul says to us, it's sort of like a a beautiful mountain that we aspire to. When I was a, a youth, I climbed on my first mountain over in Montana. Our family went on, a, went on a trip. And being up on that, climbing those craggy peaks, up on those icy mounts, reaching the top, there's sort of a, a wonder and a glory and a beauty about mountains, you know? You can live in a flat state like we do here and still be inspired by the mountains. These verses of love are like the, the Mount Everest of love to us. Yes, we live in the plains of love. We, we, we don't do it perfectly. We forget to do it. But we read these verses and we aspire to them. We aspire to those moments when we can live up and show this great love. How appropriate it is that almost every wedding starts with a reading by these verses. In that room or outside, the atmosphere is of love and of joy. And the couple reads from the Bible, or has read this inspiring picture of love. And so every couple starts out hearing, I'm going to love like that. I'm going to be full of patience and kind. I'm never going to be irritable. I'm never going to be rude. We're going to just share this love. Isn't that wonderful? What did you like that? And it's fantastic. But we know it cannot be obtained. Maybe a week after the wedding, One spouse is busy doing a task, and the other says, hey, could you grab me a Coke? And the other answers, irritable and rude. Ah, get it yourself. Our our, our patience, our our, our generosity runs out. There are moments when we're peevish and selfish. And then we turn to God. And then we turn to God. You know, we really want to be patient and kind and not envious nor boastful or arrogant or rude. We really want to be not insisting in our own way. We don't want to be irritable or resentful. We don't want to rejoice in wrongdoing. We do want to rejoice in the truth. We, we, we do want to bear all things for others. We, we do want to believe all good things, the people in our lives. We do want to hope for all good things and, 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 and be able to put up with slights. So what do we do? We turn to that God whom we love and we say, help us, Lord. Give us your love so that we can magnificently love those in our lives. At the end of our lives, somebody will ask the pastor to do a memorial service for you. When that happens, I sit with the family as they tell me stories about their beloved one. And I have my own memories of them. And I listen to see how they gave witness to the life of Christ. I listen to see how their life illustrated the teachings of Jesus. And it's always there. It's always there. When I go over people's lives, people really do Hold these as the two most important things. People's lives, our lives, do illustrate this love of neighbor, this love of God. Oh, we don't love others and God perfectly, but we do profoundly, deeply, passionately. And so when your day comes, How will your life show the love of God, the love of neighbors? I'm sure it will wonderfully. On those days when we are weak, let us turn to God that we can love fully. And when we fail, know that God, who has infinite patience and kindness, loves us and lifts us holds us and adores us and will give us all the food and drink we need so that we can turn to those in our lives and love with patience and with kindness, bearing all things, rejoicing in the good, 
believing all things in Christ's mighty name. All the faith in the world and the hope in the world is faith and hope from Christ and God's love. Paul says someday faith and hope will be gone as it will when Christ returns and makes all things do. We won't need to have trust and faith that good will overcome evil or hope that blessings will come to our children or our parents, but we'll be living in the now of love. But until then, let us do our best, seeking God's help, striving to love. Amen. Let us now receive the benediction of God. And as I say these words, hear them as though they are coming from the very lips of Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you and give you peace. Amen.